take the afternoon off work. And besides, I'm the one who brought this on us. I'm the one who needs to sort it out. And she's lost it, though, John. If he's mental enough to film the inside of the house. I know the man. Once I confront him with the DVD, threaten reporting him to the police, he'll back off straight away, I promise. <laughs> Trust me, love. After tonight, Colin will be out of our lives forever. Mm. Yeah. See ya. Yeah. Oh, hiya. Hiya. Had a few too many last night. Had to leave the car here. You OK? Yeah, fine. Morning. Hiya. Well, yeah. I've packed it in with Nick for good. Eh? I thought you and him were love's big dream. Oh, I don't know what I was thinking. I'm marrying Peter next week, for God's sake. <laughs> you know, I should have seen this coming. It's me all over. Wedding date looming, I start feeling the pressure, the batter's bejean kicks in and I start looking for the nearest exit. We'll have a chat at dinner no, time. No, there's no need. I'm fine. My mind's made up. But thanks for all your advice over the last couple of weeks. I hate to think what would have happened if I'd made the wrong decision, eh? You're right. Yeah, fine. I think I'll get started on them invoices. I've been putting them off since this time last week. You can't pretend everything's normal. So what's the alternative? Pretend everything's abnormal. What could be more abnormal than you marrying a bloke you don't want to? Who says I don't want to? You. Every time you look at me. Nick, I've already told you it's over. It was just... It's what? Wedding jitters? One last trip down memory lane. Look, take your pick, but I am marrying Peter and the sooner you accept that, the better. You no, know, all I have to do is go to the bookies and tell him half of what's been going on behind his back. You wouldn't do that. Of course I wouldn't. I'll never do anything to hurt you. I love you. Cheryl's gonna be here in a minute, so... And I'll never stop loving you. The sooner you accept that, the better. I'll make a start on those invoices. I know how much you hate doing that. What do you call these? Knickers, why, what do you call them? Talk to me like that again, sweetheart. And you'll be out that door so fast you'll leave tire tracks. Uh, what's the problem, Mrs. Connor? The stitching's all over the shop. Do them again. Get them right this time. We all make mistakes, Mrs. Connor. Oh, really? Tell me about it, Sally. Because it was 4% wastage in our last order. God knows how many this time. You are meant to be professionals. Pathetic. Why, Mary? I know she's not the sunshine and lollipop type, but still. Are you all right, is he? Yes, I'm fine. What's eating her ladyship, Michelle? Peter, I really don't need to see you. Everything. Court case with drinking, I feel like I'm losing myself. Look, just calm down, eh? I, I can't just drop everything. No, John's got the afternoon off, so I'm on my own. All right, look, I'll try and get a couple of hours cover, OK? Your place. Oh, I love him. He was laughing her way up there. He's supposed to be sleeping. He was. At first. You can't just come home on your break and wake him up. Yeah, I know. I just love that big smile when he sees his daddy looking at him. Why can't her husband do slopes off to the pub every chance he gets, eh? Oh, there's plenty of time for that. <laughs> Give it 30 years, we'll be Jack and Vera down to a tea. <laughs> Have you got any ideas what we can do with that hundred quid? I and mean, Sal gave him for Grimbo. Well, it's way too much if you ask me. Well, they love the little mite, don't they? Hmm? How lucky is he to have godparents like that? Yeah, dead lucky. What the heck is this doing here? Oh, we're just all the machinists. Nice to do we all. That is a trip hazard. Somebody could break the neck. What are you doing? They were expecting this before dinner. Oh, yeah, Kurt was going to deliver it. I'm sure he's just... Get your boyfriend on the phone. Kurt's not my boyfriend. Oh, I'm sorry, love. No offence. Listen, will you do us a favour? Will you call that moon-faced simpleton you hang around with? Tell him if he doesn't get this order delivered in the next hour, I'll be wearing his crown jewels as earrings. You can't talk to people like that. I'm sorry. Can't talk to people like what? You flinging your weight around. 
bullying folk. You're the factory boss. You're not flaming Madonna. Does anyone have a problem with the way I speak to her? No? You're the new girl. Don't talk for them, eh? This lot know if there's a problem. My door's always open. I haven't seen Kevin. I'll be always hoping to buy him some dinner. No, he's on a call out. Oh, what a shame. I want a good moan and a long drink after the morning we've had. Oh, Carla cracking the whip, eh? Oh, she's like a demented lion tamer. What I wouldn't give to tell her where to stuff a job. You know, but with it being Christmas and everything. Yeah, yeah, we want to make this year's a good one too. Oh, by the way, thanks so much to you and Kev for that money you gave us for baby Jack. Oh, right, yeah, no, it's a pleasure. Molly could buy a nice little outfit for him with it. <laughs> for hundred quid, we'll buy my baby tuxedo. Oh, I'm gonna have to get that. I'll see you later. So, David's in court now, isn't he? Yeah, but the medical what's-its have confirmed he's got epilepsy. So, so he'll wriggle out like he always does. T, you can't fake epilepsy. What? I won't put it past him. Four nights, please. Mm. I'll keep it safe. Gorgeous husband. The answer's no. I ain't said no yet. Anyway, tip for me, love. It's not kiddies. But I've just been looking at these holiday packages to lap lap. Oh, Becky. No, it's just a long weekend, right? But they get to meet the big man himself, Santa. And then they get to go on like these um, reindeer type sleigh. Becky, thingies Becky. That... You know how skimp we are. And now I've got Lloyd on me back asking for the money I owe streetcars. We've a bit faxy name. Oi, hey, just... listen, I am at rock bottom. In fact, I've hit rock bottom, smashed my way through and found another couple of levels underneath I didn't even know existed. Right, yep, yeah. I shouldn't have asked you. <laughs> when you said I'm going to learn the business from the ground up. Just drive, eh? Why? What is the point because of... Because I've got emails to send and phone calls to make. I can't do that if I'm driving, can I? I've got us a couple of nice juicy steaks. Even made my own bernays. Taste. Mm. Lovely. Look, Charlotte. My last fella was a veggie. He'd sit at the table giving my lasagna filthy looks and tutting. I can't stay long. Better open another of these, Colin. I'm sure they're making the bottle smaller. Are you really going to keep calling me Colin? It's all part of the game, isn't it? No, it isn't a game. It has to stop. It stops when I say it stops. Don't you forget that, Colin. Now, come on, grumpy drawers. Get that vino opened. We've got a lovely afternoon ahead of us. Do you want me to come in? What for? Well, I just thought if you're going to be working from home... Can you just then... go back to the factory and make sure that idiot Kurt gets that order delivered? You're the boss. Thank you. Hey. You're on time. I'm impressed. You sounded in a bad way. Yeah, I am. All right. Come on. So, these two lads are chatting at the back, not listening to a word I say. So I fix one with my painted evil eye and I say, what's the last thing I said? And he's all, I don't know. So I roar, get out of my classroom. The steak was gorgeous. So he slopes out and I look at the other one and I say, what's the last thing I said? And he roars, get out of my classroom. <laughs> <laughs> of course, the whole class went off laughing. Could hardly tell him off after that. <laughs> Kids, eh? Funny thing though, his coursework went missing come the end of term. Had to fail the lad. That was his uni chances up the Swanee. 
You're kidding. Claimed he handed it in. But they're very clear. No coursework, no pass. You ever find out what happened to it? <laughs> Keep up, Mr Chips. <laughs> I chucked it in a skip somewhere off the A54. Teach the little scumbag to cheat me. Come on, who reads these court pages anyway? There must be dozens of cases here. It tells the old world I've lost my licence. Hello. It's me. Well, I'm, um, I'm busy. Oh, yeah, with Peter. I know I saw him coming. Let me up, Carla, I mean it. You're just going to have to come clean. I mean, it might not be a bad thing that you've got somebody else to talk to, but this is... this has got to stop. So how long's this been going on, then? Oh, wind your neck in, will you? It's not what you think. Third column, halfway down. When did this happen? And why have you not said anything? Why do you think I was mortified? OK, so I get why you've been acting weird recently, but what has Peter got to do with it? Because it's not just the ban, it's me drinking, OK? I've been putting away a lot more than's good for me. Actually, I've been putting away a lot more than be good for the Rolling Stones, so... And I've got a little bit of experience with that myself, so... Peter's been great. I bumped into him at one of the Malky meetings. She needed somebody to talk to, so... Well, you could have always talked to me. Yeah, but he's been there. Done that. Well, why don't I put the kettle on? We can all... Look, no, it's OK, Michelle. Do us a real favour. Just hold the fort at the factory. That would be a real help. Yeah, of course. You know, I am always here. If you need anything. I know. Sorry, I didn't say anything before. I just... Come here. You got my number, Carla. Use it. Yep. All right, I will. How's it going? Yeah, good. Cheryl's just getting ready for the after-work rush. She's dead good, you know. She's been checking out some high-end tequilas. What do you reckon? <laughs> you better not show Janice. She'll never be out of the place. Nick, don't. I love you. I wish I didn't, but I do. Nick, please. I can see it all clearly. You, no. me, this place, a life together. Nick, please stop it. Tell me you can say it. Say we wouldn't be happy. I'm marrying Peter in a week. Tell me. Say we wouldn't be happy. No, Nick, we can't. We can do anything we like. We can be happy. Look, Carla, uh, I really should get back. Can't you stay? Look, I sympathise. You know that. But you need to talk to your own mates. Join one of them support groups you're so sure that you don't need. But this... Yeah, you said it's got to stop. Listen. Michelle's one of your best mates. She's not going to say anything. This is all good, this, honest. It's a... It's a really big step for you. Whoopi. OK. I'll see you later. I should get going. Already? I've got to get back to Fizz. I've told you, I don't want to hear her name, not when you're here. Look, I've said I'll see you, but I don't want an affair. This isn't about what you want, Colin. Haven't you figured that one out? This stupid woman. I'm trying to protect you. Protect me? The stunts you've pulled. The DVD, the funny phone calls. Fizz was ready to go to the police. She wouldn't do that. Yeah, but 
I've had to tell her this is all Colin's doing. That's why she thinks I am now, reading him the right act. I'm protecting you. And yourself. Still. Thanks, I suppose. Yeah, and now I've got to go. Just another hour. I never knew you had it in you. We'll go out somewhere next time. He's big and strong, the man I love. What was all that about? Hundred quid for Jack? You've already said you don't want anything to do with us. It was just a Christmas present. You've made your position quite clear. You don't want us and we don't want your guilt money. Hiya, Sal. Hi, Molly. Where's that gorgeous baby of yours? Oh, he's Dewey the Teeth. Oh, we haven't started early, that's what I say. <laughs> um, thank you so much for that money for Jack. Well, it's a pleasure, eh? He is our godson, after all. It's, um, it's way too much, but I'll let you off. See you later. See, See ya. A hundred quid? Ty caught me in a soppy mood. Yeah, well, I was the one who looked soppy when Tyrone thanked me this morning. I had to pretend I knew all about it. Well, you was that bladdered when you come in last night, even if I told you, you wouldn't remember. We've got two daughters of our own. You were quick enough to say no to Rosie when she asked you for some money. You come in. So, uh, when's your plaster come off then? Not soon enough. Could have been a lot worse, are we? Some of the lads it was. Uh, David, did you get off or he escaped? Neither. The CPS realised what we've known all along. It was an accident. Hmm. We should uh, trade war stories. Huh. Check out the scar. <laughs> <laughs> we can just go home if you want. No, it's all right. Graham's cool. I don't think Tina is. We should enter the Flaming Paralympics. <laughs> Oh, yeah. Oh, I don't believe that. So, uh, got off then? You think? I'm still officially an epileptic, if it makes you feel better. Want to join our Paralympic team? Drink, David. Uh, yeah, it's all right. I'll get them. Graham? Uh, yes, prefer. What, that's it? Mate, like nothing's happened? Life's too short for grudges, mate. Remember that. So, do you want a old girl or something? Maybe. Oh, go on, then. <laughs> Rising above the old town, What did you say? We got your beer in. Fridge, what happened? Uh, just laid it out. Told him how frightened you were, how we're going to go to the police. And what did he say? Well, he just broke down, saying how sorry he was. He's not been himself. I think he's losing it. Oh, Chesney's keys. He couldn't give them back quick enough. He was in a terrible state. He terrified that thug will track him down again. He's going back to Canada. Tomorrow. He's in the middle of packing when I went round. Oh! Oh, thank God! So that's it. No more weird stuff going on. No more Colin. We'll have to tell his mum. No, he, he doesn't want to see her. She's going out of her mind, John! Look, I'll just say you bumped into him. We don't have to say where or where he's going, just that he's OK. Well, if you think it's for the best. I do, yeah. And then, once we've done that, we can put Colin out of our minds forever. Yeah? Oh. I'll get your text. I'm glad it's all over. It not take those too long to make things up either. Uh, look, can I get you a drink? You've only got ten minutes. I've left Leanne on the road. Yeah, white wine. It'd be lovely. Thanks. How are things going with Leanne? Uh, yeah. Great. White wine and a uh, beer, please, Steve. You drinking in our humble pub? Well, we are on it. Oh, here you are, love. I just, um, I'll have it there for you. And, uh, yeah, about earlier. I'm so sorry, baby. Lapland, what was I even thinking? Well, don't worry about it. No, I mean, it, after everything you've done for me, Hey, Max, listen, I you are my missus. And I said, don't worry. Uh, 
Uh, it swallowed my last quid. Where's my credits? All right, soldier boy. Easy. Oh, the aye, aye, aye. things just robbed me. Why don't things work like this, George? Blimey. Blimey. That's nearly brain me. Yeah, look, I'm sorry, mate. I don't see how that's happened. What, what, you think that I've come home from nearly getting blown to bits to get killed in my local boozer? All right. Free drinks for this man all night and we'll say no more about it. What? We don't want to get him angry. All right, don't push it now, lads. Around on the house and we'll say no more about it, eh, guys? Yeah, all right, fair enough. So we're going around then, lads, eh? Yeah. Cheers, mate. My uh, temper sometimes. I might order something to eat. I'm starving. Yeah, let's get us a bowl of chips, yeah? What is happening? So, uh, life in the factory without yours truly? To be honest, I nearly jacked it all in today. Why? Carla, oh, just vile. Not much gets to me, but that woman, she just knows how to press people's buttons. Tell me about it. I've never met such an hard-faced cow. It's, it's like she hasn't got any feelings at all. Hi, this is Peter. Sorry I can't take your call right now, but please leave a message after the tone and I'll call you back. <laughs> <laughs> Poor Carla, and she's not the only one very distressed in the street at the moment. Gary Windass is too, but why? Find out by going to itv.com slash Corrie to watch the first episode of the exclusive online-only drama, Gary's Army Diaries, right now. Head over to ITV2 now for Peter Andre's next chapter, and here, it's The Tonight Programme, next. <laughs>